Thank you for giving me opportunity to speak. I am Kareem and I am a student of law at LUMS. Uh, starting with something very basic and very uh, pertinent to my society that I live in. So I am from Gilgit Baldestan, the northern areas of Pakistan, and we have been deprived of our constitutional right to vote, to make parliament in the, in the to right to make the federal government of Pakistan. So we have been deprived of this right for the, uh, since 1947. So I am speaking on behalf of the youth of Gilgit Baldistan that why is it so? And also on behalf of the people of Kashmir who have been, who are under curfew for the last seven and eight months continuously and who, have, who are more like in concentration camps. Why is it so? So that Thank these you. are the questions that I would like to throw. Thank you. Okay. So. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So we've had uh, a couple of comments and questions, if you wish to respond. Well, the first p topic was inequality. I think uh, it was inequality among states, but uh, the inequality starts with inequality among people. And uh, obviously, uh, one of the central objectives that we have is to make sure that we are able to reduce the levels of inequality among people, and especially not to leave anyone behind in relation to the prospects of uh, development that we are witnessing in the world today. But there is a second level of inequality which you raise, which is inequality among states. And in the UN, that inequality is real. I mean, uh, both among people and about states, we usually say that everybody is equal, but some are more equal than the others. That uh, is the fact also in the United Nations. We have five countries that have a veto power in the Security Council. No. That is a basic inequality. Uh, and indeed, uh, what we see in international relations today, I come from a small country, no? Uh, a small country that is member of the European Union and member of the United Nations. And let's be clear, small countries have much less influence than big countries. Look at climate change. Uh, we had more than 70 countries that committed to carbon neutrality in 2050 in our summit. They represent 15% of the emissions. All those big emitters in the world have not yet committed to do the same because they feel they are more equal than the others. And we really need to make sure that equality among people, which is not only equality of income, it's equality of opportunities, is the fact that in many societies, the children of those that were in the best universities are those that go on being in the best universities. And the children of those that were not in the universe or weren't in the bad universities are the ones that still go to the bad universities. I mean, we need equality among people, but we need also equality among states. It will not be easy to reach. I have to say that we have been trying to reform uh, the Security Council since um, many, many decades ago, and things are not moving. Because one of the things I've learned in my life is that power usually is not given. Power needs to be taken. And that is not always <laughs> possible. Now, the second question about human rights. You are absolutely right. Uh, we had a fantastic progress of human rights. Human rights are not only political rights. Human rights are political, civil, but also economic and social rights. You were talking about hunger. To eliminate hunger is to promote human rights. To eliminate extreme poverty is to promote human rights. So you need to have an understanding that all rights are important. The right to speak, the right to, to freedom of association, political rights, but also the right to uh, have health, to have education. So all those rights need to be seen together. And the truth is that we are seeing in relation to some of the civil and political rights a pushback. The civic space has been shrinking in many countries of the world. Uh, the capacity of the civil society to participate has been shrinking. We see more journalists in jail. We see more human rights defenders in jail. And so it's very important to have a pushback on the pushback and to have a strong commitment. And young people can play a very important role in order for the full respect of human rights, both political and civil and economic rights. And of course, this is true everywhere. And this is true particularly in the situations we have more dramatic violations of human rights. And I've been saying very clearly in relation to, I spoke on many issues about Kashmir during this, uh, um, this visit, but one of the things I've said, it is absolutely essential to have 
human rights and fundamental freedoms for the people to have uh, their lives and their dignity fully respected. Thank you.